My name's Dr Jodie Rowley. I'm an amphibian biologist at the Australian Museum and I also coordinate the Australian Museum Research Institute. I spend a fair bit of time in Southeast Asia chasing frogs and streams up mountains um, and lying in the mud recording their calls. Frogs are really incredible, fascinating, precious, special creatures to me and I fell in love with them as soon as I started seeing more of them, as soon as I started getting out into the forest and actually realising what was around you if you actually went out at night with a headlamp in a stream. And, and then when I realised how much trouble they were in, um, in terms of conservation and how threatened they were, with one third of all amphibian species threatened with extinction, I guess that was it. I was done. I was hooked. Kwang's tree frog is a really special frog and a really interesting story. I had a PhD student who was spending a fair bit of time in the forest in Pua Hot Nature Reserve which is in north central Vietnam on the border of Laos and he sent me these photos of this frog that he'd seen when he was in the field and it was this small green gem and I knew instantly when he sent me the photos that this thing was undescribed, that no one in science knew that it existed. And so I think the next year I set up an expedition I uh, went over there with a bunch of students and we went out into the field, camped in the forest and we went out at night with headlamps up the stream and we heard this sort of faint chirping, twittering noise and on the leaves, on the thick green vegetation around the stream were these tiny little two centimetre big sort of lime green frogs with aqua and black spots down their sides uh, calling and the call was something that I'd never heard anything like it before. Not only did it sound like a bird, but it was what is known as a hyperextended vocal repertoire. So every kind of note and call was completely different. There's a handful of frogs that I know of that actually have green blood and green bones. And Kwang's tree frog is, is one of these. It's also quite transparent on the skin, on its, on its ventral surface. So when you look at its belly, you can actually see its bones and things through its arm. And so for me, uh, coming from a country where we have a pretty good understanding of our amphibians and how they're doing and our national parks are pretty well protected, uh, I felt like I could make more of a difference working in Vietnam or working in Southeast Asia in general on the amphibians, trying to find out what species are there, um, how they're doing, what areas need to be conserved and also training students. We should care about frogs and other amphibians for a lot of reasons. They're actually a huge component of the ecosystem. Um, in terms of biomass, for example, if you went to a forest, piled up a bunch of frogs and piled up all the animals, hypothetically, into big piles, a lot of the time amphibians would be the biggest pile. And what that means is that they, number one, eat a huge amount of insects. So without amphibians, uh, crops and other things like that would, would be uh, probably overrun. And another reason is that they're great food for a bunch of other animals. Another aspect is that you sort of don't think about is that tadpoles in the streams actually eat a lot of algae and other things that then transfer energy from the water to the land and when you lose the tadpoles then also a lot of things eat them but the streams clog up with algae and other things like that. So ecosystems are incredibly complex and amphibians are a really important part of the ecosystem and and we know some of the consequences, which aren't good, of losing amphibians, but, but the other consequences, you know, we'll never know. Um, hopefully we will never know the consequences.